start your day just right. Welcome to Mornings Together with Rob, Mon, and Bernie. Well, good morning, everybody, good and hello. Morning. It is great to have you with us on Talk It Out Tuesday. Yep. It is October the 6th of yep. October. Wow. But right now, it is not 6th of October. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're confused right now, as, have I somehow changed time? No. We are actually recording this in the afternoon the day before uh, because of some scheduling things. We aren't able to be live yep. to you this morning. Um, so we're pre-recording, but conveniently because we're pre-recording, we've got Georgia with us. Yeah, Good morning. Georgia. We, we decided we swap out Rob for Georgia for That's this morning. Right. Upgrade. Upgrade. So shocking revelation this morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have just learned, heard from Georgia's own mouth that she has missed two mornings together episodes. I know. Can you believe it? But I think I've got two pretty good excuses. One time I had an electrical engineer coming to look at the damage that the fire caused. That's true. And yeah. the other time I was actually on stage at Bethlehem College speaking um, to a whole lot of, I think they were year 10 to 13 girls. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was a pretty good excuse so to miss it too. Pretty good excuse. Yeah, really cool. Otherwise, so, consistent. So I want to know today in the comments out there in cyber world, who's been here for every single one? Because Mon has. Yeah. Mon's been here for every single one. I've I missed know, I know, it's crazy. a few. Yeah. Four? She deserves a round of applause for that, I reckon. <laughs> I think she does. <laughs> there <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you got you to keep that up all the way to episode 100. I don't know. Otherwise, we'll see. <laughs> if you get to that and you get 100, you're going to get a belt. Like a, a, wrestle, belt? a wrestling belt. You know, like the ones that you can call <laughs> the right. UFC. <laughs> the ones that are like probably as big as Mon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greatest of all time. MVP. Being yeah, every right. episode. MVP. There you go. The OG. The OG. MVP. There yeah. you go. Lolita. <laughs> hey, definitely. Yeah, definitely. there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yes, you're going to be watching this on Tuesday or maybe later on, but we're on Monday in the, currently. So we're speaking yeah. to you from the past. It's kind of creepy, kind of cool. Uh, but today is Talk It Out Tuesday. Talk It Out Tuesday. record thing is we're not getting to see people's lovely comments that's right the convenient thing is georgia is here with us right now so that we know that instead of them being a first comment from georgia georgia you can say i actually said good morning first you did there you go that's pretty cool there you are um so on talking about tuesday uh we're going to break down the sunday sermons so on sunday which was yesterday when we we're recording this but on tuesday it'll be you know a couple of days ago mm-hmm. uh we had monica in the morning yep as yeah, part of the prodigal me. church series and then in the evening we had Brittany. uh Steering as part of the things Jesus never said right. series. So we're going to get to that in a little bit. We're just going to start breaking that down. Uh, we haven't said hi to producer Logan yet. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Logan. Hello, Hello, Logan. It's almost he went cockney for a yeah. bit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he feels so far away. Yeah, but all you see, he's a man of mystery. All, all you see, see is eyebrows. eyebrows. His I know. Eyes and well, eyebrows. before I could actually only see from here up, I could yeah. even see the eyebrows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, is he there? So you're yeah, getting yeah, to peek yeah. behind the curtain here a little I know. bit. That's you right. Know, you're here in the studio. You're getting to actually see what Logan looks like. That's right. Yeah. This is all we get to see. Not that they spent all of last year at Young Adults no. and <laughs> youth with him but before that. Yeah, no. Do you, do, can you see or hear why he's called Morgan Freeman? Oh, definitely. Makes sense. I think I was the one that originally said that in the comments. <laughs> I think that was me. I don't. Uh, I don't remember. She's our no, guest. Say no, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> I won't come back. <laughs> I'll stop watching. R- riveting chat. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Producer Logan, come on. Yeah. Um. Yes. So we. Where were we? How are we? We're good, right? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, really it's a sunny day. Producer Logan, how was your weekend? Uh, it was good. Busy. Busy. And yeah. then today's a fun day. Today is a fun day. We're doing yeah. many things today. What are you going to be doing tomorrow, which is will be when this is live? What have you forgotten, Bernie? What, what do you mean, what have I forgotten? What's today? Today is Monday, but you're going to be doing something tomorrow, which is Tuesday, which is when these lovely people out in the world oh, are going oh, to be watching oh. it. No, sorry. That's a good point. So yeah. what is yesterday? So, oh, gosh. We're we moving along. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so confused as well. I know. It, it is, is so birthday. weird. Yeah. It's, it's your like oh, we're, it's... we're back to the future. There you go. There you go. I finally clicked. Today yeah. is Logan's birthday. It is Logan's Happy birthday. birthday Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Yeah, Logan. We got there eventually. We got there. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> How old are you turning today, Logan? 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. Lovely. He's so fresh-faced. He is. With <laughs> the wisdom of a 50-year-old, <laughs> but the right. face of a 22-year-old. Yeah, that's right. It's <laughs> good. It's good. Uh, well, it's lovely to have you with us this morning. Uh, so you're with myself, Bernie Cowan, Monica Carey. Georgia and producer Logan. Uh, if you're just tuning in uh, live, uh, you might be confused as to what's going on. We are pre-recording this today because 
we were unable to do this live. Uh, right. If you're listening to this back and later on in the day, it will be exactly the same situation as yep. what you normally listen it to, and um, which is fine. The virtual campfire is still warm, still hot, Makes still you happy good. every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> now uh, on Talk It Out Tuesday, we start with a catch-up question, or no, an instant reaction. Instant Sorry. reaction. <laughs> Instant reaction is kind of related <laughs> to what's going on in the world. That's right. Catch up question yeah. is kind of more lighthearted and yep. fun. That's right. Um, so instant reaction question. There's only one question I can ask us today and ask the world <laughs> this morning. And, you know, we are speaking from the past right now. So who knows what has happened in the 24 the hours. By this airs, ends. you're hoping something up. happens. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't do that. <laughs> but, of course, the, the, the question we have to ask is President Trump has – Got COVID, same with yeah. the first lady. Mm. How do we feel about it? I think Monica needs to start us off as as the American on the show. I, yeah, the rich I have to say, I think that you would not wish this on no. anyone. No. No. And so I I do sympathize with him and his wife because it wouldn't affect just them too. They have mm. a son yep. yeah. that lives with them, Baron and all of Who that. So yeah, it, it's you wouldn't wish that on anyone. The whole yeah. family has it, eh? Uh, just the, the youngest son so far that we know of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so there you go. So, And I think the, the tricky thing with COVID, as always, is that we don't know how it's going to affect you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. could be either no symptoms, yeah. asymptomatic, or it's going to eat your lungs or yeah. in hospital, you know, on a ventilator. Exactly. So, uh, and yeah, I don't know. So I feel, I feel for him. I think when I first heard that, I was like, oh. <gasps> Oh no! What does that all mean? And I think the way things are going in the states right now, it's just like that. It's unfortunate. Yeah. It is. It, yeah. It, you know, it's our hearts go out to President Trump and his family and everything that's going yeah. on there. And you know, it just shows again that COVID is a virus that has no bias. Yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It, you know, um, as long as you have a mouth, you're you're open mm-hmm. to, to to getting it. You know. Yeah. Um, it, it's been interesting for me watching the online reaction to this. Yeah. Uh, from the moment it was announced to, you know, the, the following days mm. and the fact that Twitter is having to censor and remove comments of yeah. people wishing, you know, that he succumbs to, the, which is horrible, horrible, yeah. horrible yeah. stuff. Um, Albert Tate, someone who I follow on Instagram. Yeah, love he, Albert Tate. I love Albert Tate. He goes, may we put aside partisan politics and genuinely lift up the president and float us in prayer. Absolutely. Pray that they, they might be compelled to take this pandemic seriously. May we lift up so many in our nation and the world who have been impacted by this pandemic. Lord, in your mind. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the only response you really can have. Yeah. You know, the response we should have to Trump should be the same as if a family member catches COVID. Absolutely. It's hard, for, and I think a lot of people are finding this hard because he's been someone who's been, you know, mm-hmm. so blatant and kind of speaking against COVID and it, the reality of it kind of thing, and now he, he's got it. That's challenging for a lot of people. Yeah, 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 and, and fair enough. Yeah. 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 But no, seriously, uh our hearts go out and prayers go out to Trump and yep. his administration, the Lord, who is being affected by COVID right now. And we hope for speedy recovery. Yep. Because it's rough, rough. Yeah, really I think rough. it's going to be interesting to see now how he responds to COVID and if he changes his response. Because obviously he did kind of take it as a joke yeah. very unseriously and whatever like kind of attitudes will be interesting now that he's experiencing it firsthand if that is going to change the way that he actually responds in general. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But then and, like, also, on top of that, my concern is that if he doesn't have a bad city, that he still won't take it seriously. Yeah. 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 Mm. But the, the thing we have to keep coming back to, and this is the important part, is this is, does not give us an opportunity to, and we talked about this on the show a couple of weeks ago, about, you know, it can be very easy to uh, launch in and, and attack something, you know. Yeah, you sink know, to the lowest. Sp- denominator. Yeah, sink to the lowest. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is not a chance for us to kind of be like, ah, oh, got you, you know, mm. uh, and like kind of lay into him a little bit. It's it's it is, it's the only res- real response is to sympathize and yeah, to empathize, yeah. regardless of what he has said, regardless of what he has done, regardless of his pub- the public opinion's perspective of him. This is a man and a family who is suffering from COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, we can't predict what he's going to do in response to this, but that's not our that's not our thing to yeah. press into it. For yeah, us, it's like, judge, we just yeah. hope that he recovers well. Exactly. Because totally. he's, he's a person, the thing, yeah. they're a family that is loved by Jesus and loved by God. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I I can understand people's split over this. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the calls for, I hope he wakes up and smells the reality of COVID. Yeah. Um, 
But COVID in itself has been so divisive, and we've yeah, talked a lot about especially this. Especially in the U.S. So whether you're the president or yeah. you know, the, your next-door neighbor, everybody has a different opinion on yeah. this. It's, so. it's yeah. like what yeah. Colin was speaking with us about yeah. a couple weeks ago. It's like if you can't – it's so divisive. Like if you can't talk – about it in a family setting, like over the dinner table kind of thing without being angry or being like, I can never speak to you again. There's something wrong yeah. there. And we have to be, you know, as Christians who are in New Zealand, who are away from the situation, you know, we have to keep ourselves in check because it can be yeah. too easy to just jump in and be like, yeah, get him kind of thing. Exactly. Like keyboard warring and things like that. Like we, we have to check our hearts. Yes, exactly. I agree. Getting, getting real. We're getting oh, really yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> Do, yeah. Do you want another current event on a lighter note? Yes. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast and I so want to jump on board with this. And I don't know if Kyle's heard this, but in the States, they are actually, there's like, um, oh gosh, the words got out of my head. What do you call it, Kyle, when you do like a sporting thing and you kind of put who your favorite teams are? Like a fantasy football kind of thing? A pool, a bit. Well, not a betting pool, but you know, you have your your thing, kind of like that. There's another word for it, but yeah, you kind of have your little chart. It's called the fat bear, and people are watching live stream. Oh, these bears are ready to go into hibernation. Everybody's <laughs> oh my who wins, gosh. Who's the fattest bear? And they've got <laughs> names and everything. And, and I heard one guy said, "I think Otis is going to win." It's a real, it's a real no. website where they are saying, "Oh my goodness!" And there's no way to actually weigh these bears in the wild. Oh, man. <laughs> so it's just kind of this pool of categories of the innovative the fat things bear. that have happened because of COVID. I know, I know, hilarious. Where they have all these names. And you can actually yeah watch and look and weigh in on who's the fattest. Bear people must be really desperate to reach that level. I know. What? So, I think people it's are funny. desperate for entertainment. Yeah, really, yeah exactly. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah, but it's like a thing, and everybody was talking about it. Yes, yeah. so that's hilarious. Funny. Imagine the guys. Like, oh, I've watched everything on Netflix today. I wonder what I can. I wonder what fat bears do. I wonder what fat bears do right now. <laughs> I wonder if we can make a pool going about <laughs> who's who's got the fattest. Oh, word. I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, goodness. It's a great one. Yeah, I know. It's hilarious. Yeah, eh? it's, that was just kind of lighting up the COVID <laughs> mood, but that has been on my mind. Go on the Fat Bear website and just have a look at these bears who are eating away. Just ready Maybe for that's what you should do. You should just replace the show tomorrow. With fat with Bear. With, with yeah. Fat Bear? Yeah. Uh, put a comment in the comments when you you know watch this, yeah. whether we should replace Thursday show with a yeah. with Fat Bear <laughs> watching party. Um that is fascinating. I wonder what the New Zealand equivalent would be like. You Kiwis. Know, waiting for Kiwis to we come out at night time. We can never see one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, penguins? You would never... penguins? Penguins, maybe? Yeah, no. penguin or possum. I was just thinking Hang on the Kiwi thing. Yeah. Well, possum thing is like, how many can you run over? <laughs> <laughs> but the have you been to the like, Auckland Zoo and been to the Kiwi exhibit in there? Not the yes. Auckland Zoo one. Been to the Wellington Zoo yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but... I don't yeah. know what your experience was like, but yeah. I remember there, and you know, because it's real dark, so you only come mm -hmm. out at night time. Yeah. And like, you don't see them because they're not they're just like chilling. Yeah. There. They're just like whipping around. Like, whoop, yeah, whoop, I know. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, I know. I, and they're big little chunky things. But I think they're robots. <laughs> I think the ones in the exhibit <laughs> aren't Conspiracy real. Theory 101. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd never thought that. They could just be on tracks. They could be like a Disneyland ride. Yeah. It could be yeah. like a small world after all. Yeah. Maybe you should do a morning to get a show at Auckland Zoo and just hop in the enclosure and see if you can see any tracks. All right, Auckland Zoo. You, I know you watch this. Sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe your Kiwis are real. Proof. <laughs> Surely take them in the comments later. <laughs> Hashtag fake Kiwi. <laughs> I don't know. Just like about it. Like it was kind of terrifying, but how yeah. quickly they moved. I'm like, this is something. That's funny. From all I've understood about Kiwis in the past. Yeah. And if they're that fast, how are they endangered? Because they just yeah. could run away from things all the time. Yep. Yeah. That's so funny. I think it's to do with their eggs and possums and rats eat their eggs and ferrets, and it's, that's yeah. why they're endangered. Don't do that, so they can't run away don't. when they're eggs. I know. That's <laughs> sad. All right, we should move on because yeah. we're we're going down a dark hole. <laughs> yeah. Banter this morning. Um. All right. So, uh, so today, you know, we let's talk about Tuesday. So we've got some housekeeping to do before we press into some other bits and yep. pieces. Uh, the first is that if you want to, you can fire through your stories to us. Maybe you know more about Kiwis than Bernie does, or mm -hmm. and you can tell us that the Auckland one's actually real. Um, stories at Bethlehem.org.nz. You can email us on that. And you can follow the church on social media at Beth Bap Church on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, there'll be updates about everything going on there at Life of the yeah. Church. Um, some great stuff there. 
Uh, if you need any help at all, you can get in touch with the church care team, care at Bethlehem.org.nz, or give the church a call on 0757623444. Uh, we love praying for you, and so you can text your prayer request through keyword BBC prayer through to 4040. Um, this is a handy number to have on your phone. You can flick it off anytime, wherever you are. You might be in Wellington. I've still got it on my phone. Yeah? After all this time. Come on. So there you go. So you can fire those through that way. And uh, this coming weekend, you can join us live uh, in person uh, at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. Or join us online at 9 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. Again, who knows what could change between now and the end of the week. Should be fine. Should be sweet. Kyle's carrying this and going like, nothing's changing. It's going to be fine. That's right. Um, so mm-hmm. we'll see you this weekend online or in person on all the different platforms you're currently watching the show right now. Uh, finally, this morning, uh, you can listen back uh, to the audio version of this. It goes yeah. out to Spotify. It goes out to Apple Podcasts. And so you can listen to it. Uh, you can catch up on, on all the previous 80 episodes. It's episode 81 wow. today. So you can listen to the previous 80 episodes including last thursday's one where me mon and rob got real and shared some stuff we haven't shared with anybody before that yeah. was probably my favorite episode oh, really? really it was so cool getting to know you guys more because yeah. so often you guys are interviewing everyone else and yeah. it's yeah. like what about you guys do we get to know you we talked yeah. about maybe doing it again at some point yes do you reckon we should yes <laughs> if we do it again what type of things do you want to know I don't know. I, now you're putting me on the spot. Um, I do that a lot but, with this show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I just think it would be really cool to hear like some of the stories that you guys have seen, like God moving in your life. And I know that you guys, some of you shared like how you met Jesus. And I think that's that's so cool just to see and get to know you guys better because mm-hmm. joined you for 80 80- one episode. I know. Yeah. It's like yeah. you're part of the yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I know you guys so much better. So it'd be cool to like kind of get to like cool. know more about your guys. Jesus. Oh, that's so right. cool. Well, we'll lock that away in the box. But yep. um, yeah, you can listen back. Uh, just like George said, so you can uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and join us from the virtual campfire that is always warm, always warm, always good. Banter is always fresh. <laughs> the time is always right. So oh, yeah. um, join us anytime you can around the virtual campfire. Uh, whether it be watching back these episodes on YouTube or Facebook or listening to the audio podcast. It's yeah. great to have you with us. All right. Now, people are probably wondering, why does Mon have a laptop on the table today? Yeah. It's because she's playing Gallagher. <laughs> I feel really no, shocked right no, now. No, it's mine. <laughs> no. Uh, so we're going to move into the Sunday Sermon Breakdown. Hey. That's not the wrong button. Sunday oh, Sermon yeah. Breakdown. Yeah, I, yeah, I just right. believe you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Sunday Sermon Breakdown is where we take the Sunday messages, we pull it apart, break it down, yep. and help hope that they help you out, yep. uh, maybe with your life groups or just in your week-to-week yep. you know, thinking. So maybe you want a little bit of extra oomph from the Sunday morning services. Yep. So that's why we're here. That's why we do this. Um, and so we're going to start with Sunday night, which was uh, Brittany uh, sharing as part of the things she just never said. The actual yep. last one in the series, yep. last talk in the series, this coming Sunday, they're going to have a panel. Yeah, with all the previous speakers uh, to wrestle through some of the, the bits and pieces. Yeah, well. and questions from the floor. Yeah, questions that are text in that we can answer on each of our subjects. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you either join us in person for that or online. I'm going to be there. Mon's going to be there. Rob's going to be there. Uh, all Bri- this Eric. Brian and Eric will be there. Yeah. So it'll be there's fun. been talk of like a Graham Norton red chair. <laughs> we don't I like it. It sounds like hilarious. I'm going to get flipped out of the. That's of right. The thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's going on? Yeah. Uh, so that's the this coming Sunday, but let's talk about Sunday night, which was last night. Now we're when we were recording this, uh, and Bree was talking about the fact that you won't. Jesus never said that you won't have bad days. Yeah. yeah. Georgia, why don't you kick us off with this discussion today? I actually found it a very relevant discussion for me when I sat there because I, as some of you are aware, have had a lot of craziness happening in my life at the moment. Um, my apartment caught on fire yep. yeah um and there's been a lot of other events that probably don't have the time to go into but um yeah so for me it's been a series of bad days and so to me it felt quite relevant mm-hmm. yeah. as I'm sitting there listening and yeah I completely agree with what she was saying where she was talking about you know like the attitude that we go into things and the way that we approach things that's actually the only thing we can control and that was something that I have definitely learned mm-hmm. um is that whatever's happening in our lives we can't actually generally control most of it the only thing that we can actually control is the way that we're going to respond to it yeah and i think that was really good reminder for everyone in that moment yeah yeah no that's so good yeah so good because it's so true because uh i remember you know when i was probably at your age georgia 
and I was going through a bit of a rough time and I was seeing a kind of like a counselor at the same time about it. And I was telling them, I was like, oh, I just feel like the world is out to get me. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is wrong. The devil's just nipping at my legs the yeah. entire time. Yeah. And they just turn around and be like, you know what, Bernie? You know, life is just hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Life just can, you know, kick you kick you when you're down. Like, it's just how it is. Like, this is the reality of the world we live in yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But it, and they said the same thing. It's all about how you choose to take it. Respond. How much power you choose to give it. Yeah. And how you choose to move forward. Yeah. And I was actually having a conversation with someone the other day. And what is what so happens is I think everyone always has stuff happening, yeah. to be honest. Like almost every oh, single person yeah. you meet. Yeah. And obviously there's a scale of the severity of what's happening. But typically most people do. But everyone does just put on their brave face and goes about their days. And yeah. it's great, but it can also be really dangerous. And especially I know for me when I have I had a year where I just lived in constant anxiety to the point where I would just be at home on the couch all day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would hop on social media and I would see, oh, so-and-so's at the beach. Oh, so-and-so's out doing this. So-and-so's doing that. Yeah. And here I am in not my, able to get off the couch. Yeah. In my bad day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My bad day. And yeah. yeah. And so with me for my social media, I've actually been really, really intentional. Like, yes, obviously I post the good things. But I also try to post the bad things yeah. because that's what life is. And I, the yeah. amount of times that I hop on social media and I see someone that posts about today was really crap. Like, my kids were this, my kids were that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, cool. You have had a crap day too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, it's actually so comforting, I think. Yeah. And that's yeah. something that, it's, it's, really real. it's, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's not the filtered. No. Yeah. It is like, this is how it is. Exactly. And that's what I, I have enjoyed. You know, there's, you've, no, you've noticed a significant shift probably in social media yeah. over the last three to four years, actually, when um, the bubble popped of like, yeah. it's not, you know, social media is not just only for the yeah. really, really good thing. There was kind of like a movement against it yes. almost. Like, yeah. come on, don't be fake, be real, mm. hashtag no filter, all that stuff yeah. Like yeah. a few years ago. And we've seen it actually change in a way where it is more, it's never going to be as real as, you know. Definitely well, no not. one's going to live up to no one's gonna give you the, the full Instagram real. filter or the Pinterest that yeah. was all perfect yeah. and your home looks a certain way. You, and yeah. you're going to look at social media, you look at Facebook, you look at Instagram, yeah. and it feels realer than it did, say, four to five years ago, but you're yeah. still not getting the full picture of no. what an actual person's going through. No. But to be honest, though, my first reaction, and I think it's because of the world we live in, mm -hmm. when something good happens, my first reaction is, you know, like, oh my gosh, I want to share this with people. Mm -hmm. But when something bad happens, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know. No one wants to hear yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. and I think that that's the thing too, is like our society is like, we only want to hear the good things. Yeah. We don't really, do we want to hear that? But I think everyone actually does. Well, it's kind of the, the thing time. is like, I don't want to be the person that brings other people yeah. down. Or I don't want to come across the one yeah. that's yeah. like, uh, like Ross from Friends always walks up to his friends like, hey, it's like, oh, just, it changes the mood. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. Like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, like it. Eeyore, how's your day? Yeah. Oh, not too. Yeah. yeah. Like, we exactly. don't want to, we don't want to be that. And no. so I think a lot of people think that they're like, yeah. I can't, I don't want to share this be because that. I want to be the Eeyore. Exactly. Uh, but I think like group. you said, I don't want to bring people down. Yeah. 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 I think that's the heart of it. Yeah. But that leads us to repress some of these bad things yeah. or to like Definitely. segue them away into the cupboard of mystery. Yeah. And that comes back to bite us later on. Like, oh, yeah. it'll come out somewhere. It will. And so, I think there's a key here where it's like, how, do who do you have in your life that you can call up when you're having a bad day, or what can you do when you have a bad day that you can actually help process it with? Exactly. Yeah. It? yeah. Completely. And I can't remember where she referenced the scripture from, whether it was from Matthew or from Luke, where Jesus says, um, "You will ha in this world, you will have trouble." Yeah. So he never said you will not have bad days, yeah. but, but take heart yeah and i love john how she 16, emphasized 33. john 16 and i love yeah, yeah. how she emphasized that yeah of that it's not just oh take heart you know like a nice yeah. little sugary kind of thing it's like take heart, heart. yeah it was a yeah. command yeah it it's was actually take yeah. a, i have overcome the world yeah. like and this is before the cross this is before the mm -hmm. resurrection jesus is already saying hey i know what's coming and which is amazing to me, yeah. which totally. is incredible. Knowing what he was going to go through, yeah. still encouraging in his darkest moment, encouraging them. I always think of it like it's never, I never think of it in like a Care Bear sense when that take heart thing. It's always like in, you know, and Logan will probably picture this as well, like the, the war movie, like they're in the trenches and yeah. the captain, like we're about to go over, take heart. Like, take heart, Or yeah. like the gladiator where they're about, he like yeah. speaks to the guys before they go out and have to fight. It them. is that. It's like take heart, like we can do this if we do it we together. We do it together, yeah. And even if we fall, we fall here. Exactly. Going to, exactly. It's, that, it's that type of thing. And that's what Jesus says to us. It's like take heart, man. Take heart. Come close. We're going to go to the go-go on this. And things yeah. are going to hurt. Things are going to put we're together in this. It, which is, I think, the same sort of thing, even the John 15. Mm. 
Remain. Remain. Abide. Abide. Stay. Yeah. Dwell. It's like he says it like twelve, like a dozen times, and it's just like he pounds it and he yeah. pounds it. Or oh, remain words. and stay. Yeah. Dwell. Abide. <laughs> My but what job, do we do? He does say, <laughs> opposite. We do the opposite every <laughs> time. Yeah, yes. But yeah. Try to something to escape or whatever it is. But yeah. Logan, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So this actually relates to my time in the Navy quite well. So like, particularly when we're deployed, they teach you because stuff is going to happen. Yeah. Like you're going to have things go wrong all the time, but it's always about addressing it quickly and moving forward and not dwelling on that, particularly when you're dealing with like safety things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always important to acknowledge when things go wrong and then get help with it afterwards. And the Navy would have psychologists who you talk to every time you come back from deployment, but it's always important to talk to people afterwards, even if you don't address it right then. Hmm. It's good. It's good, Logan. Yeah. So... Hmm. <laughs> no, with that, but I think if, if you know um, Brie well, I think she's got um, like some big events that have happened to her in her yeah. story. Yeah. But it was good to hear that that there were other things in her life as well. But she has been through some big stuff and yeah. and, and felt that um, the relentlessness of it for a season yeah. um, of it, and just to see now, um, not her. I don't want to say the word blossom, but. They, um, she's been real resilient. Yeah. That's the word through that. Yeah. Um, and to see God just carry her through that journey. Because when you're in it, it can feel like it's forever. Yeah. Yeah. And and to be encouraged that it's not, that God is with you. And you will have bad days, man. That is a, it, yeah. That's the human condition. Yeah, it's, but yeah. It's easy to, to victimize yourself in yeah. situations like this. And that's not what Jesus is asking you to do either. Yeah. Um, He's saying, "Hey, it's going to be hard." Yeah, but I have overcome the world. Like that's yeah. what that's the lines that come after yeah. this. Like, um, I have be strong. I've overcome the world, kind of thing. Like he is king. He is the one who will see us through. You have Amen. to be aware that you are temporal. You're mortal. You're not made for this. Yeah. this planet. You know, there's something else to yeah, come. Better. You know, it's not all making make. It's like all this. It's cake on your plate while you wait for the pie in the sky kind of thing. Like, yeah. you know, like there's, there's better things to come. Yeah. And she did touch on that too. Eh? She spoke about um, the importance of community and like about sharing like what you're going through with people. But then she kind of shared about the flip of that and how there are sometimes you reach a point where you'll just talk about it with absolutely anyone just like yeah. to yeah. hear, you know, like to feel like you're being heard by everyone. But yeah, yeah. she did kind of say like it is actually really important to talk about yeah. things. And I thought that is so important because I think that's one of the things that even social media does is it makes you feel isolated and alone. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think she was kind of hitting with that point of, you know, like it's important to have community. It's important to, yeah. you know, yeah. still do life with people and not yeah. get stuck in that rush yeah. of what's I happening. Agree. I think it's so important to have community. And I think as well, the same way, if you're finding yourself like being that your person who yeah. you're just constantly the one who's like, can only ever speak about the bad day thing yeah. that's going on. Like reach out to things like people like the care team, like yeah, that we have definitely. here at church, yeah, to um, walk you through that, to help you process that, because it means it, it's indicating that there's something bigger going on. Exactly. That, you know, uh, you, you know, there's other stuff that's going on for you. Yeah. So, you know, there is a self awareness thing with this. If you're finding people are wanting, like not wanting to be around you because you you come across as this mm -hmm. evil thing, maybe there's something going on with you that you could help, that the care team here could help out yeah. with. But community so important. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, like you said, there's something else going on, and like you said there's different weights of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. It could be the chip tooth or your marriage is falling apart. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's such, there, there's weighty things yeah. and to have people journey with you. Yeah. It's everything. And it's the, the processing is important because sometimes if you leave stuff unchecked, the chip tooth becomes, or feels That's to exactly you as happens. extreme as yep. a marriage. That's falling apart. Exactly. Um, you know, so th there's stuff to process. We're not, you know, us around the table, we're not trained counselor or anything like that. No. So we're only putting a drip in the bucket, bucket yeah. of things. But, you know, I think it's important to come back to the, to, again, and, you know, Brie probably talked about this and Sunday, just, you know, Jesus didn't have a cruisy time when he was yeah. in ministry or leading people. He was or, known as a man of sorrows. He was known yeah. as a man of sorrows. So we, we need to somehow, in our each of our journeys, make peace with the fact that, you know, it's not all going to be smooth sailing. And this is, I think, a, a lie that a lot of Christians do yeah, believe is definitely. like, if I follow jesus if i do my tithe it should be cruisy and, and there should be no issues that yeah, i come across yeah. uh, or I, if i increase my tithe good things going to happen to me yeah. that's not what the gospel promises the gospel promises that you're going to be rejected yeah 
just like Christ was rejected. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time that you're going to come into a relationship, you're going to come into knowing God in a way yeah. that just blows everything else apart mm-hmm. in comparison. Yeah. I think when we were talking earlier about, um, we, we were talking around the table just about how we escape grief. Yeah. Um, I think too, when we do that, we miss out on the true beautifulness of joy. Yeah. You I can't agree. really experience yeah. joy, yeah. like unspeakable joy, if you've never gone through the valley, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think once, once you're like, because I'm a real escape. I love escape oh, yeah. artists. Yeah. I am. That yeah. That's kind of like my Enneagram thing, you know, like yeah. um, the number that I am. But, yeah, it's just like, like I love, love neat things and love exciting things. But at the same time, man, yeah. I hate grief. I, oh, yeah. It's like, what does David Dell call it? Um, he calls it the unbearable feeling. Yeah, that oh, that is. sadness, and I hate feeling sad. Hate feeling really deep, deep grief because yeah. there's nowhere to go. But I think in, in leaning into it, joy is so much sweeter. Well, it's, yeah. it's one of the things. If you're constantly running away from it, or you're not facing it, or you're yeah. repressing it, you're denying yourself growth opportunities. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you're not like, if yeah, if you're not facing it, if you're just acting like a victim to it, you don't actually learn from yeah. from the thing because exactly. you, you're in, instead of rising and going over the the the, yep. the hill of the the trench out to the battle to yes, actually fight yeah. it you're cowering in the corner kind of waiting for yeah. things to go up with your hands over your ears yeah um or waiting for the next thing or waiting for the next thing to, reset, you're yeah. just thinking okay what next yeah. yeah 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 so yeah it's it's worth facing it even though it's scary yeah and it's hard and it might rock you but there's a there is always a growth opportunity or there's a learning opportunity. I was just going to say that because I, when I look back at my life, like, yeah, there's been periods where things have just kind of been cruising along. But typically those are the periods where, not that I'm stagnant in my faith, but that I'm kind of not really challenged because things are easy. But mm-hmm. it's only when things are like really, really hard and you're in the trenches yeah. And you are literally on your knees going, Lord, I have yeah. no idea what to do right now. Like that is when you grow and that is when you actually find the true character of God. And as yeah. cliche as it sounds, like from the greatest valleys come the greatest mountaintop moments. Yeah. And when you are in that valley and then you break free from that, like I wouldn't change that valley mm-hmm. because it makes you appreciate that mountaintop that much more. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Good word, no, Georgia. That's good. Yeah, now, in a couple of weeks' time, we have a fantastic <clears throat> conversation that we've already had that is coming out on the 15th of October with um, Fergus Keith, who's a funeral director. And yeah. we had this awesome conversation about grief. Yeah. So this is a little shout out for that episode that's coming out, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. Listen to Listen that. Listen to it because Sounds like it's be good. he was just dropping pearls of wisdom. Dropping bombs of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. really good stuff that applies to this conversation. Um, so hang out for that. A little drop of the theme. Yeah. But Finding yourself in awkward situ- situations, I think, is a fantastic transition to Sunday morning sermon. <laughs> Monica, you had quite a tricky passage of scripture to work through on Sunday morning, didn't you? You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk? This is, Can we be this, real? This is why the computer I need a holiday. Is on, this, this is why the Come computer is on the table today as we dive into Sunday morning sermon. By the way, you can listen back to Bree's sermon uh, from Sunday night. Uh, it will be on yeah. the church website and also the church app from today Yeah, in the future. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you, t- you, you told me the thing, the title was It Happened and It Happens. Yeah. It's part of the Prodigal Church series. Why don't you give yeah. us the 411? <laughs> well, we are in the midst of the Prodigal Church series and... Paul has just been, especially these are, we're right in the meat and potatoes. Oh, yeah. He's oh, not yeah. messing around, and we're talking about all sorts of stuff. And Paul now is just like he transitions between these chapters from 8 to, like, 11. Paul's not messing around, no. and he's really talking to the Corinthians about all sorts of stuff, about running the run the race, man. Stay focused. Get focused, or you could be disqualified. Mm-hmm. Like, run. Don't give up. Keep going. And then he transitions to what he starts to do in chapter 10 is he starts to parallel um, the story of Israel and the Exodus and trying to say, hey, man, Corinthians, you're no different to the Corinthian story and to what they're up to. Because now the Corinthians are starting to flirt with the same sins that put Israel dead in the desert. And he's saying, be careful that that that's going to happen to you. And so if you guys know the story of Israel in the desert, man, they were um, like rescued out of slavery. And he starts to pick snippets of these stories. Remember, they, um, 
they tempted God and he sent snakes into the camp. <laughs> and it's like the Old Testament's crazy it with all these crazy insane. stories. Yeah. And or they complained about the food, you know, we have no food. You rescued us out here out of Egypt and um, there's no bread. There's no water. And we detest this food. Mm -hmm. And so God sends, yeah, he sends the snakes. Or Moses is up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Not even that long. Getting the law. Getting the law. Getting the law, getting the Ten Commandments. What did the Israelites do? That's right. They go to Aaron. Like, hey, can you make us a calf? We he don't know folds where, like a lawn chair. We don't know where <laughs> Moses has gone. God's obviously gone. So let's have a golden calf. That's it. Right. <laughs> and they they end up having an orgy, and so and God kills twenty three thousand of them. Yep. Like he's not having it. Any that that split loyalty, but two as Paul's telling it, the, the why he's saying he goes that's not too different to you guys. Look at you going back to the temples, the idol feasts, where all sorts of twisted things go on in the back. Um, that, you know, the sexual immorality. And so uh, the four main things in the stories that Paul tells is the same things that the Corinthians are kind, he's warning the Corinthians about. And they've been flirting with idolatry, mm -hmm. sexual immorality, testing the Lord, and um, grumbling, grumbling, complaining. And he's saying, man, you're going to end up like Israel, mm -hmm. disqualified or not finishing the race. It's like they were rescued in a dramatic way, yeah. in amazing time ways. A pillar by time. fire, yeah. um, pillar of fire, um, a cloud by day, all of that, just the, the presence of God so with them. And he's like, and they still fell. Yeah. And now the Corinthians are kind of cocky, kind of kicking back in their faith, thinking, well, we're say I've been baptized. I go to church. I can still go to those idol feasts, back to the idol feasts. And so they're enjoying the culture in the city. But, yeah, they're starting to do some things that Paul's going, whoa. Yeah. You're called to be a part, guys. Come on. Yeah. I, I love that. So recap, recap again. So you've got sexual immorality. Yeah. You've got. Sexual morality, you've got idolatry, idolatry, sexual morality, yeah. testing the Lord, yeah. and grumbling. I love that grumbling is in with the other one. Yeah. Because most people will be like, oh, what are, what are the issues? Like, for any modern day context kind of thing, is like, oh, yeah, sexual immorality, going after Id Id idolatry. Sorry, I keep thinking the third one. What's the thir third one? Testing the Lord. Testing the Lord, <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. trying to be your own gods kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. A lot of Christians probably want to put grumbling in, in a mix of things that they need to keep on the top of their minds to keep on top of. Yeah. You know, there's almost a feeling a lot of time that we feel justified to complain about things. Yeah. Um, and it's like grumbling, murmuring under your breath. Yeah. Whining. Frustration. Complaining. Yeah. That's all defined in there as and well. For me, it's like, yeah, the other three, yes, we'll talk about those, but yeah. I want to focus on that first. <laughs> the part, because I think there isn't anything more corrosive yeah. in church culture them grumbling yeah and that encompasses you know the things you say under your breath the gossip that it, it leads yeah. on to that you know all this stuff is so corrosive but so uh insidious at the yeah. same time i didn't add the quote but i um i was reading in a commentary and it said um grumbling has killed more churches than heresy ever has yeah. now i don't know if it's true but i was like point taken yeah yeah like ooh, bam mic drop yeah. right there but yeah. the, i know i was pounding them a lot in chapter 10 yeah. i'm not going to include so that let, quote let, too, let, yeah. if it's okay with you let's start with the grumbling thing let's pull yeah. at the mirror in front of each of ourselves yeah. and yeah. sit before the mirror of reflection <laughs> and this is what you guys do as well, at home as well today as well pull out the mirror of reflection yeah. and sit, sit in front of it and just do some self-assessment <laughs> we get to do it in front of you Ruben. we do because <laughs> for me yeah. you know as someone who's worked in the production world here at bbc and other places <laughs> we hear a lot of grumbling yeah yeah um from all sorts of things from music is too loud the lights too bright the lights <laughs> too dim you know all these things yeah. these, these things like practical things um you hear this this grumbling and it's not it's not only ever just production based kind of stuff you always you hear the, yeah. it's kind of like the the echoes around the building of the grumbling um, and you're okay to be frustrated. You're okay to have your opinion around things, but there's something interesting about how you actually outwork this grumbling thing. Yeah. That that's what Paul's calling attention to. Yeah. Because a lot of the time you're doing it just to pull down somebody else yeah. or uh, yeah. you're doing it not actually for a good outcome kind of thing. You're yeah. doing it to elevate yourself above other people. Yeah. I think like he's referring to all these stories mm. because they happened 
and it happens. Yeah. And over and over he says, this happened to them. And, 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 and Paul's making the comparison. It happened then and it happens yes. for you, Corinthians. And it's like for us, it happens now. Yeah. And like exactly what you're just saying. And I think um, they lost sight of the of God's presence. Yeah. And for the Corinthians, they have been grumbling and complaining against Paul. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. Who are you? And then for us today, yeah. It's like I like your title because I think it's got two applications. I think it's got it happened in terms of grumbling happened in the Old Testament. Yeah. It happened, grumbling happened in the New Testament, grumbling happened today. Yeah. You know, there's that application, but at the same time, there's God's response that happened in each three of those places as well. You know, God did show up, he did listen, he did do things for the Israelites. Yeah, he sends food. He sends food. He sends water. He shows up snakes. He shows up in his son (laughs) in the New Testament. I know. And today he shows up in each of our lives still. Yeah. So God is active in doing. And so this is why it's so crazy, the grumbling part of it, because we're saying things like, oh, God, where are you? Or like we're we're tearing down our brothers and sisters. Are you doing this wrong? Doing that wrong kind of thing. And God's just like, hey, I'm showing up. I (laughs) I know. I'm here with you. Like it's, yeah, it's, it, it, that's what, that's what, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, And what I said yeah, the more is that you could easily look at those stories and mm-hmm. go, what's wrong with these people? Exactly. <laughs> what is wrong with this them? This is why I've asked you us know? to bring yeah. up the mirror of reflection <laughs> yeah. today. Because a lot of the times we can be like pointing the finger at yeah. them, How could you not get it to the Israelites or the, yeah. the Corinthian church? We're sitting here on our high horses. And oh, the fingers are. are just coming yeah. right yeah. back at us. In and spite- if we're, exactly. And if we're honest, like when I, I said it yesterday too, if, if I'm honest, I scored a three out of four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What the Israelites struggle with. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. some idolatry when we kind of get into yeah. that. Yeah. Testing the Lord and grumbling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, so, yeah. you know, we have to understand idolatry is not just golden calves on a pillar somewhere. No. Yeah. It's no. that new house. It's extra house is the extra boat oh. it's the new mercedes benz you know tim keller has a great quote um that i use it's like anything yeah that you place before before God, jesus, before jesus. Totally. Like yeah anything you know yeah I, i'll find the quote later it's so on, it's, yeah, it uh, yeah it's important because idolatry is, is, is putting a thing in front of jesus yeah and then the, the, the way god wants us to be is to have jesus at the at the head but that can feed into other things. Yeah, totally. A lot of people think like, oh, I have to give up that other stuff. And, and no, it's, it's not that. It's it's like if you're putting the SUV on the throne of your life. Yeah, you're worshiping. You're worshiping yeah. it. And, you know, you do see people with this with certain items. Oh, they yeah. polish the, cut, the thing on the weekend or like, you can't touch it. It's my thing. You know, it's, it's not, Jesus isn't saying you can't have that. It's He's saying, put me in the right place. Yeah. Totally. And from that, exactly. things are going to flow right into your families, into your friendships, yeah. into your material things you own as well. Yeah. And I think when I first met Jesus, to me, idolatry was just the statues of the Old Testament, you know? Yeah. And I think yeah. it's so easy just to have that perspective of like, I don't physically bow down and worship a statue, yeah. but just that like so much of the Bible, it's context. And so in yeah. their context, it was physically bowing down, but you're right. I think in our context, it can be that, it can be wanting the best yeah. iPhone. It can be wanting the best of this. Yeah. And that's what you're striving for yeah. in life. And I know that, yeah, there is definitely times when I'm like, oh, I really, really like to have that because it's got this or it's got yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, it does kind of challenge you to sit back and yeah. be like, yeah is Jesus still at the center of my life? Yeah. And if that is not the truth, then yeah. being like, okay, well, what do I need to do? And sometimes it is actually removing those things. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I know for me, it was a lot of like, sometimes like, especially with social media, you'll see things. And so I would go be like, do you know what? I actually don't need that at the moment. And so I delete social media for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah just to reprioritize myself because it's amazing how much time you spend on it. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, and I I would <laughs> yeah. look at my phone, I'd be like, I'd pick up my phone and I'd almost go there, that yeah. app where Facebook was and I'd be like, oh crap, no, that's not there anymore. And I'd be like, what am I going to do instead? Yeah. Oh, maybe I should read my Bible, yeah. you know? And sometimes you do actually have to make those changes, even if they are difficult yeah. when you, good, when good. God does show you. Yeah. I think it's important as well, you know, like, um, People can sometimes say, like, when does it when does it become an idol? Like, at what point do I? It's my thing that I'm passionate about. When is it actually becoming an idol? And I think a lot, of, uh, you know, what could be helpful, and this is not a d- definitive thing, is when that thing starts to dictate the dictate the yeah. course yeah. of your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, with social media, you might have an idol of status, yeah. where you're th- waiting constantly to hear uh, people's reactions to your mm-hmm. posts or to your images, and that's yeah. pr- that's stopping yeah. you from seeing your family or actually leaving the. Yeah. It's dictating the course of your yeah. life. Yeah. The pursuit of the new car yeah. or an extra house yeah. means you're working more, you're 
you're making cutthroat decisions at work and then the yeah. pursuit, you know yeah. that's when it's become an, an idol you know um it, it's when it has the power to dictate the outcomes and dictate exactly. outcomes in your life is when you're hitting upon that idol, idol, idol territory. Completely agree. Because some people hear this, this talk about idols and stuff and you, and you talk about these types of things and they're like, okay, so I, they can do nothing? Like they get mm. quite severely legalistic very quickly yeah. about it. And I don't think that's what, that's not what we're saying. Paul, Paul addresses that. And he calls it a weak conscience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In chapter eight, I think it is, or chapter nine. And he talks about when you have a weak conscience, that doesn't mean that you're weak. Yeah. It means you're legalistic. Exactly. Yeah. And we've talked about this, I think, last week, or we've talked about it before, about how God actually wants obedience versus yeah. large dishes of sacrifice. A hundred percent. And I think a lot of us can be like, okay, I'm going through my season of removing idols. And so you cut things out. Not that saying cutting things out is bad. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. as humans, we do this because we forget. And then when we remember what we were supposed to be doing, we go like, okay, yeah. I'm cutting out x y and z it's like a diet or a fast kind of thing for this season i'm cutting out x y and z and then the next season it's just back again what god's actually wanting you to do is like actually in your small movements and your small steps in relationship Mm -hmm. with me take those small steps in my direction completely agree yeah Yeah. no i just found that tim keller quote took me a little bit it says he says from his book counterfeit gods brilliant book by the way he says what is an idol it's anything more important to you than god anything that absorbs your heart mm-hmm. and imagination more than God and anything you seek to give you what only God can it's give. Good. Amen. Yeah. So good. So good. Hey? Yeah. yeah. So on and on it goes. And then he says, flee from idolatry. He was not messing around. And then he says, no temptation has overtaken you. Yeah. That is not common to man. Meaning um, God will always provide a way of escape. Yeah. Our God is faithful. Yeah. He, nothing will, um, he will give you the ability to endure it. And I think, man, what a breath of fresh air. When you're reading all of that, you think, oh, yes, Lord. Yeah. And it's so comforting. Yeah, all, it is. Yeah, so temptation, meaning I think we can have a tendency to think no one else knows what this is like. No one else knows what it's like to struggle mm-hmm. with identity or sexuality. Mm-hmm. No one else knows what it's like to um, to um, work on a marriage that's struggling. No one else knows what it's like to raise to be a single mother. Yeah. No one else knows. This. And I think the enemy's ploy is that we think we're alone yeah. in it. Yeah. And he's like, Paul's like, no, no, you're not alone. He's with you. He will always provide a way out when you're tempted. And I think it's important to know that a way out isn't always just an ejector seat out of the no, situation. Exactly. Sometimes it is like yeah. it's a way some, through. Sometimes it's a way through. Sometimes I like to think it of as imagine you're caught in sinking sand. And that's like the, yeah. you're being sucked in mm-hmm. further and further. The only way out of sink sinking sand is small movements yeah. out of on a rope yeah. kind of thing. And for a long time, you feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have personal experience with it. <laughs> this is largely based off movies. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you're pulling yourself out. You know, yeah. the, the rope is your way out. Yeah. Thing, but getting out takes time, time. And for a long time, inch by like, inch, you're feeling yeah. that way. I think the same way to be said, it's like it's like a healing wound. You know, yeah. if, you ha- if you're injured, whether it be broken leg or. Yep. You know, and you can be like, oh, this is never going to heal. It feels the same today as it did yesterday. I still can't do X, Y, Z. Yeah. There's always this interesting thing that happens with healing injuries where all of a sudden it seems like two days later or whenever it is, you're like, hey, this has been fine for like a period of time. Yeah. And you know how you know it's fine? It starts to itch. Yeah. But 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 in that process of it healing, you've done all the physical therapy, you've rested, you've leaned into the appropriate sources of of healing and stuff like that. And then it's that thing you're like, actually, hey, it's, better why well, didn't you be able to do that now i can yeah. do that again that's what we're, that's what this is it's not always an ejector seat it's it's a slow yeah course yeah. of of healing or it, escape obedience obedience is an escape route yep that is obedience is always the way out yep. of temptation and when you blow it obedience is always the way back in. yeah yeah and it, it's it you know they talk they, there's no getting around it it's yeah. repentance which is repentance yeah. so turning away turning yes. and looking up kind of thing but the thing you know what we humans do we turn but then we uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh yeah definitely i've done that yeah. so many and times so yeah obedience is you know maybe you do have a big significant moment which turns you the first time away you know you start being tempted turning back again you yeah. know it's it's it's, well, it's a weird dynamic yeah. of you can still be moving closer to where you're supposed to be but you can be faithful to where, mm-hmm. where you're from and you got to keep turning back yeah 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 he'll always provide a way out and a way out is obedience a way out is like what you touched on earlier having community I just realized what I did just now made no sense to the people who are listening to this in the audio version only. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I feel bad for this. I was we, we had turning away physical. from the camera and turning back. <laughs> <laughs> and 
in an artwork walking along an imaginary Yes, we were getting line. the physical demonstration. Yes, I apologize. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. <laughs> Logan, anything you want to chuck in the mix from this bad boy? Not currently. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, well, Monica. Is, there's so much you could talk about in this. There was never any chance we're going to talk about everything. No, no, not at all. Is there anything else you want to leave our people with before we start to wrap things up today? Um, I just love, I guess, the heart of Paul. And I think um, just appreciating him on how he has just been relentlessly patient, like a patient dad mm -hmm. to these people who are so... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just some of the things, and they're complaining against him, and and being so wanting to be part of the culture, and they want Jesus and mm -hmm. Jesus and he's like, you can't have it. You got to pick. You got to choose. And I think one of the things that I talked about with that um, is I wish it were that clear cut. They've been going back to the temples for idol worship, and Paul's like, do you know that when you go to the altar? and eat the meat off the altar, you are communing with demons, just like we do as Christians during communion. Mm -hmm. It's an in intimate, yeah. deep thing. And he says, don't do that. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. And and the patience of that, how he's calling them back um, to God, I, I just loved all that. And I think um, what I said was, I wish life was that clear cut. Mm -hmm. Here's what's right. Here's what's wrong. Demons. Okay, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But life is gray. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is gray and it is ambiguous and it's fuzzy and trying to find the way and um just i don't know i just i would encourage people and i kind of didn't say it then but just man go back to the word pray god has provided ways yeah. out mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. it's community it's remembering his presence but we can always i would love for my default to be when i blow it the first thing i do is run into his presence yeah. not away from it yeah, yeah. um to go and say hey god i'm here i'm flawed and I encourage people to come out of hiding. I don't know what their your current temptation is or your struggle, but man, you've got God has provided a way out. He's got people that are pray for you. He's got church community. Um, his forgiveness is right there. Take it, mm -hmm. take it. Good one. Yeah, it's real good, <laughs> real good. Well, Georgia, you have a good time on the show today. I did. It's different. It's been experience. crazy. It's crazy, huh? <laughs> My mind is so full and so tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our world. Yeah, um, right. Well, that's us for today. We're going to wrap things up in just yeah. a minute. So join us back here on Thursday morning. We'll be live on Thursday morning. None of this pre-recorded shenanigans. Uh, but, Georgia, <laughs> you've been fantastic. Here's a round of um, she has been able to see the soundboard now and she can testify that it's a real thing. It, it, it's like a legit, I feel like you need to show them. I think we, <laughs> gotta, we gotta keep the secret. Oh, it's a secret. Right. You've got to come check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, it's audio today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's no, right. it's going to be video as well. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. going to have seen us and here. Yeah. Us. Hopefully this all works. Hey, producer Logan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you couldn't see him. He just gave a thumbs up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, that is us today. We'll be back on Thursday morning uh, with our very own Caleb Fry it yeah, in yeah, the studio yeah. with us, top fan. He needs to reconnect with his fans, Instagram so he's come back on the show. Yeah. Insta true. famous. Um, but Georgia, would you mind praying for us as we close out our yeah, time together definitely. today? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Lord, I really want to thank you um, for the show. First off, Lord, I want to thank you um, for the strength that there's been for so many of us during such a difficult season, Lord, and um, for the amazing conversations that it has provided, Lord, and so many of them have been so appropriate for the season that we've been in. Um, and Lord, I really want to um, thank you for this conversation that we've been able to have today. Lord, I feel like we've touched on some really, really important topics, Lord, and even then I feel like we have actually only just scratched the surface. Yeah. So Lord, I want to pray for the conversations as we leave this, Lord, that um, if there are any questions that have been left unanswered, answered father that you will um just provide the space for those to be answered father and that um that you will just that your presence will go before us lord we cast off the spirit of shame Amen. i feel like that is something that um was really touched on lord is that so often we want to retreat um but lord that and that's shame that does that to us lord but that you want us to step out into your presence lord so i pray that um anything that anyone is carrying us included lord that um we will just be able to come into your presence lord and that we will be able to release that to you lord and that we can break free from things, Lord, but that is through you alone. Thank you, Father, for all that you were doing, um, for the hearts that you were touching, Lord, and that um, no matter what, you'll never finish with us. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with us today. We will catch you later. Have a wonderful Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll see you on Thursday. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.